A lot's going on in the workshop this week. I don't know how I'm going to fit it all in. We're working on a new bench, a mini cabinet maker's bench. I really think you're going to like this thing. And we're doing a box making challenge with the great Charles Neal. Oh yeah. Where's my pencil? Here in the Stumpy Nubs workshop, we've got tons of projects in various stages of completion. Unbelievable. But lately, we've been concentrating on just a couple things. Drone pencils! Besides pencil shortages. So Charles Neal, that's right, the Charles Neal, challenged yours truly to a box making contest. Now, I think he's pretty sure he's going to win because a guy like Charles Neal, you know, one of the better known woodworkers in America today. He doesn't challenge somebody whose name is Stumpy unless he expects to win. The rules of the contest are pretty simple. You have to make a box or a small cabinet that will sit on an end table and you can put all the junk that you want close by while you're watching TV. Maybe a remote control, your box of milk duds, whatever it is you got. It has to be made out of domestic woods, no exotics, no veneers. Let's face it, I'm not going to beat Charles Neal in a head-to-head -head box making contest. The guy's been a professional woodworker for like 35 years. But, I have a few tricks up my sleeve, and I think that I got a pretty good chance of at least not getting embarrassed. Meanwhile, the workshop needs another bench. We have all kinds of flat surfaces that we can work on. But hand tool work is best done on a traditional cabinet maker's bench. And so this week we've been designing one. With the mini woodworking bench, we wanted something that could give us the full clamping and holding features of a traditional cabinet maker's bench, but that would fit in a small shop and a small budget. So if you have a workshop that's full of power tools and machines and it's small, you just don't have room for that hand tool bench, I think you're going to like this one. Hardwood's expensive, but if you know where to look, and you have the tools that you can mill it yourself, you can turn stuff that people would call just junk into some great projects. All this white oak, red oak, walnut, different kinds of maple, cherry, this is all cutoffs from the mill. They were letting their employee take it home and sell it for firewood. I bought as much as I could, and it's been acclimating the shop for a long time. It's just aching to be turned into a bench. This is a great way to get some hardwood. You're just going to get short lengths because they're cutoffs. But you can really get some good stuff. Grab all the 4x4 four four pieces you can if you're going to make this bench. The longest pieces are only 4 foot long. You won't have trouble finding those. But also grab all those short, you know, foot, foot and a half 4x4 four four pieces. Those are going to make our top. When you're using this kind of wood, it all comes down to the milling. You're going to be spending a lot of time at your joiner and planer. So take out a wire brush and clean as much of the dirt and grit as you can off all the sides of the boards. It'll save a lot of wear and tear on your blades. Now if your stock's too wide for your joiner, you're going to have to rip it down on your table saw. But remember, one of the downsides of using this type of wood is that it's often going to be twisted, bowed, there'll be internal stresses. That can be dangerous on a table saw, so if you're not sure, Take it over to the bandsaw. You don't want to risk this thing pinching into your blade and kicking back at you. At the joiner, it's all about taking off a little bit of stock at a time. It's better to remove a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch at a time than to tear out the grain. Plus, it'll extend the life of your small joiner. After you've got two sides flat, square to each other on the joiner, move it up to the planer. Here we're just trying to get the other surface parallel with the first surface you jointed. 
Don't worry about how thick it is just yet. Same thing with the length. Just cut the minimum you have to off to get it nice and square. We'll worry about the final dimensions later. This might be a lot of hardwood for a low power radial arm saw, so take it slow. Don't worry about a little burning on the end. Or if you want to do it on the table saw, good for you. When you get all the pieces for the top over to the bench, now's when you lay them out and mark your final length. The shortest and thinnest is going to determine the final dimensions. I love a rustic look in a workshop. I got 120 year old siding on the walls in here. This mix of hardwood is going to look nice in our workshop. Now's a good time to lay it on your bench and switch your pieces around. Try to find what looks best to you. We're using a mix of hardwoods from the scrap pile, so we've got white oak, red oak, some hickory, lots of maple, a lot of different stuff, and if you get it in just the right order, you might even get Stumpy to smile. Now this stock is pretty short, and we're going to run it perpendicular to the front of the bench, so we're going to use kind of a breadboard system. What we do is we cut all the pieces to length, and then we mill a tenon on the end of each piece. Now it would be easier to just glue them all up side to side, and then pass the whole bench top across the saw and make one big tongue all at once. But by doing it as separate tenons, we can use this in the corresponding groove to help to keep it flat during glue up. No calls needed. The last few pieces don't get a tenon on the end. This is going to be part of the sliding tail vise. wanted a really heavy duty front and back edge to the bench top. So I got some, the biggest beams I could find. Now they're only four feet long, so I still could find them out of the cutoffs. And you can pound these to death. The stock we're going to use for the legs on our bench isn't that heavy duty. It's only about three inches wide. But we're going to make up for it with joinery. Plus, the bench isn't that long. We're only going for just over four feet. So we're going to be in good shape. This will be very stable. Ten degrees. Ten degrees. I don't care what all these people say. Do my dovetails the way I want to do it. That's right. But he also gave them the use of the Cornuba to serve as a floating chapel and reading room. And I don't use no marking Outside knife either. White Bethel flag, Pencil. Signaled that troubled sailors could find comfort here. I know a lot of guys like to make uh, their hand tool benches with just hand tools, and I think that's great. Take your time, develop your skills, make something you're really proud of. But I ain't got that kind of time. If God wanted us to cut the sockets for these dovetails with a chisel, he wouldn't have invented rotors. You just need a really long bit. I was just minding my own business. I just wanted to cut the sockets that the dovetails on the top of the legs go into. I almost lost my nose. I'm pretty freaked out about it. The only bit long enough for this use in the workshop doesn't have any plunge cutting teeth on the end, it's smooth. That rides right on the bottom of the recess, and if you tip that router even a little bit, it goes right back in your face. There are no safety glasses in this world that's going to save your face from a spinning router bit. It doesn't matter that the cameras were running for this close call. I still see that bit every night in my sleep. I think I'm going to take a break and work on something else for a while. <laughs>